Good morning, everybody. This is Jeffrey Jansen. How's everybody doing today? I hope you guys are motivated on this Friday. It is today, July 8th or 9th? No, today is July uh, 10th, 2020. Hope you guys are all motivated today. Sorry, I'm out here. Actually, I am watering my garden right now because first thing in the morning when my flowers are all up, I like to get out here watering. I wasn't really able to the last few weeks or the last couple days. Uh, I was working, I've been with the coronavirus and everything going on, there's been so much going on that I basically had to let it go for a little bit. I had my neighbors water though when I wasn't here in the morning. But anyway, I hope you guys are all having a great day. I hope you all know that you matter and you're important. I hope everybody knows that whatever you're doing today, make it great. Never give up on yourself. Never give up on each other. Uh, never give up on anything that is important in your life, Okay. And when the motivation is, it's not motivation. One of the things about me is when I'm ser a serious person, when I'm having fun and I'm, on, and I'm motivated, you know, I'm a lot louder. When I'm being serious and when I'm, you know, really down and wanting to talk to people, I'm actually very quiet. Um, it's one of the little traits that a lot of people, I can always tell who knows me and who doesn't. And the reason why I say that is because when I'm loud, it gives me energy. And when I'm quiet, it makes me think. And I want everybody to start thinking about that in your life. You know, what are you doing that is getting your energy levels up? What are you doing that makes your life important, okay? I, it reminds me kind of how my life is about those televangelists and everything that are in those churches. And they're, they're singing the praises and everything like that. And think how energized they are as they're getting moving. So that's going to bring us on to our first point. When we were in the military and everything else, we did runs. We did all kinds of morning exercises calisthenics stuff like that and we were always yelling you know we we're always doing cadence we were always doing things that would get our um, hearts beating hearts up you know our levels up and that's important for everybody to know and do because it actually makes you more in depth to getting things done it makes you less tired you don't need like energy drinks and stuff um, and that, that's a good thing to do so like I said if you're Getting up in the morning, you know, yelling to a pillow if you're having stress, you know, whatever you got to do to get that heart rate up, bring your temper attitudes down and everything. I've never had a temper in my life, so I'm not too worried about that. But I do know some people do have a temper or they do get st stressed really bad and, and they need a little extra help here and there. So when you're getting up in the morning, get your bed made, you know, get some breakfast in you. All right. Do something that you, even if you just have to walk up and down your stairs. Okay, and the reason why I say all this, and a lot of people don't know why I started these a long time ago, this was not because of my something me and my daughter did. A lot of this particular part was for all those people out there that got depression or they they wake up and they just don't want to get out of bed. They don't know how to get out of bed. Or they, they need so small victories in life. The smallest victories in life lead to big victories. Everybody thinks that, oh, if I can't do it now, then it can't be done. No, you've got to have a long term goal with success. You've got to have a long term goal with uh, money you gotta have a long-term goal with family and friends and the long-term goal is this what are you doing today to set yourself up for tomorrow one of the greatest you know things and it and it's it's like a dumb it's dumb but it's not it's just like a kiss situation keep it simple you know when's the best time you know yet uh, yesterday was the best time to plant a tree okay yesterday was when's the second best time right now so in other words, it's not a matter, it's about what are you going to plant? How, what are you going to do today that's going to lead you into tomorrow? You know, who are you going to talk to today? Who are you going to be nice and kind to today? What, what, kind, of, what you, kind of business are you going to do today? Where are you going to go today? How, who are you going to help today? All right, if you didn't do it yesterday, it's okay because you still have today to do it. One day at a time. So, you know, it's like a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step, right? You know? Well, when are you going to start that journey? you got to take that step. No matter what you do, even if you go backwards a little bit, you still have to take that step. So a journey of a 1,000 miles begins with the first step. But the question is, not necessarily a step, is when do you start? Well, the starting's up to you. Only you can do it. It's like people that are smokers and drinkers and everything else. And, I, and like my grandpa, when him and my grandma used to drink years ago, I didn't even remember him. That's how it went. But when he stopped smoking, you know what he did? He went cold turkey. He just stopped. So his journey of a thousand miles started when he stopped smoking and he did other things to um, basically keep off. Now, cancer took my grandpa, but it was not lung cancer or anything like that. And good thing, because if he would have, he probably would have been a lot more pain. There would have been a lot more medicine. But things would have been a lot more complicated. So each one of us, though, what are we going to do to make our jobs better? 
to basically live our dreams, we got to stop living in our box and start dreaming again and going for your dreams. Maybe there's a certain car you want. Maybe there's a house you want. Maybe there's a charity you'd love to give more stuff to, okay? Uh, how do you do that, though? Where are you going to do that? Maybe there's bills you've got to get paid. Maybe there is um, vacations you want to start taking. Well, when are you going to take them? You know, and everybody's like, well, I just can't. I really want to do it. Well, you're going to be dead by the time you take them if you don't do something or put in place. So the motivation is going to get you to start thinking of ways of making more money. The motivation is going to make you work a little bit more at your job. Motivation is going to get you to, you know, maybe I got to think outside the box and start saving a little bit more, okay? Motivation is going to get you to get up to lose that weight every day and take a walk, okay? Uh, right now, one of my friends, uh, his kids, one of his daughters, you know, I'm so proud of her because she's going to be playing football this year and she's, she's better than half the boys on the football team. But you want to know something for her, this is a challenge because think about it. She was, she's one of the only girls that's ever played football, but guess what? Every day, so I told her I will run with her every day and her dad's going to teach her football. I'm not, I, I can do the cardio with her. I can't teach anybody football because anybody who knows me knows I've never really, I'm just not that big on the football. But I tell you what, I'll work with her every day to run with her and help her get her cardio and everything else. Uh, with my daughter, you know, I mean, she wanted horses. I found a way to put her on horses. You know, I found a way to, you know, get into all these different events. You have to find a way. You can't just throw up your hands and say, I'm done. You can't just throw up and say, well, I can't do it. It's not possible. So many people, they give up before they even start. And my point to this right now is if you're going to get motivated and you give up before you even start, it doesn't matter what business you're in. It doesn't matter what you do every day in life. You've got to do something. Now, these things here that I'm doing with these uh, daily reflections, motivation stuff, you know, nightly prayers, daddy-daughter times, uh, events that we do, they motivate me, okay? It's not necessarily for you. It's for all of us because I believe in each and every one of you. But it makes me motivated to think that maybe, just maybe, somebody out there needs to hear what I have to say. Maybe somebody out there, they don't want to hear a priest or a rabbi, a reverend. They don't want to hear a mayor. They don't want to hear a politician. They just want to hear somebody tell them that they matter and that they are important. So I'm going to tell you right now. Heart to heart, as Father James always tells me, as Father Jim Walker always tells me, JJ, eye to eye. Okay, everybody on here right now, eyeball to eyeball. Eyeball to eyeball. Now, guess what? Eyeball to eyeball also comes from the Marine Corps when we were in there. But right now, it doesn't matter if you're military or not. Eyeball to eyeball. I want you to know right now, you matter. I want you to know that you are important. Eyeball to eyeball. Stop looking away. Stop. Okay, you over there sitting there like, I don't need to look at him. Yes, I'm talking to you. You matter. You're important. Today, you're going to rock it. Okay? And even if you don't, you got tomorrow and you got the next day. But you got to start now. You got to start your stepping. You got to start your journey. You're going to fall. You're going to fail. You're going to basically go back. Okay? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with the, 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 the smaller story. My endings are never really good endings. I know, I know. But I want you to think of the story of the Good Samaritan. Okay? And the Good Samaritan has been told many, many different ways by many different faiths and religions and everything else. But it's about a, a person that's in poverty that is on the side of the, that's on the road and they're poor and they, they can't, they fall and they can't get up there. They've hit rock bottom. Okay, we'll just look at the, the Good Samaritan story. Somebody that's hit rock bottom. I've hit rock bottom many, many times. I've been at rock bottom even recently. A lot of you wouldn't know it. But you know what? I'm not going to let it keep me down. But I want to tell you about this. So anyway, so you're at rock bottom. So you did everything you thought you could do. And then all of a sudden, all these people walking by, you know, the people that you've helped in the past, you know, all these people, they, they wanted what you had and you did it to it. And all of a sudden you're like, Hey, I'm low. Now they're going to be there. And all of a sudden they don't. The first one comes by, uh Oh, they see you up front. So what do they do? They ghost you. They go all the way around you. They do everything in their power not to get around you because, well, you don't have anything to offer them anymore. You don't have anything, you know, they were eating your table scraps. And now that you don't have those table scraps anymore, they're going around you. Well, that's not a good Samaritan. Okay. So the second one comes up. Okay. Now this one, it's like, oh, haha! Ha, I took everything you had. But now what they do is they beat you up and they steal what little you had. Why? Because they don't care about you. They never did. But I tell you what, whenever you were on top or whenever you had everything, when you were helping them, they were okay. So what do they do? They kick you when you're down. They kick you when you're down. They kick you when you're down. And why do they kick you when you're down? It's like being in the Marine Corps. You know, you, you trust your buddies with your money and everything else. And all of a sudden they don't pay you back. I'm doing the Marine because, like I said, that's what I am. I'm a Marine. So, But anyway, these guys kick you. So the first one avoided you, so you can't go to them. The second one, you know, beats you up. Then the third one comes around, and, and uh-oh, all they do is they come, and they, they don't know you, and they step over you. 
and you're just you know when this stuff all happens you're so down now all of a sudden you're you're just like why are they doing this to me i help them when they because it doesn't matter to them but you can't worry about it finally the last one comes up and like oh my gosh who are you, you know you may not even know this person the one the people that you knew are the ones that ghosted you they're the ones that beat you up they're the ones that bullied you because that were those are the only ones you knew of. All of a sudden, someone comes up to you. You may know them. You may not have sp- spoken too much to them. You may have been the bully in the past. And all of a sudden, they come up to you. And they're like, what can I do to help? And they pick you up off the ground. They feed you. They put clothes on you. They, 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 find you, they help you find a job. They help you. They don't have that much money themselves. But they give what little they have for you. You need to be that person that finds a way to give when you have nothing to people that have nothing. And it leads in my Good Samaritan story of the three soldiers. You know, the three soldiers during World War II going into a small uh, German town where, you know, everybody's like, uh oh, you got these three American soldiers coming in there and uh, we don't, you know, we don't, we're gonna lock our doors to them. Well, they played stone soup and what they did was they went over to house to house and they decided that they were gonna have a big public party. They were hungry, but they didn't have any money, they didn't have any food. And they were trying to figure out, you know, how are we going to eat today? What are we, where are we going to stay? So instead of using negativity and forcing their way of robbing and stealing, they decided to throw a party. And, you know, each person like, hey, you know, we're going to make this stuff called stone soup. Stones were available. So what did they do? They took something out of nothing. And they created not just fun and food for themselves, but for the entire community who all then came together. They go from house to house. Um, yeah, with our stone soup, we need a... We're going to need a little bit of uh, oregano, and we're going to need a little bit. We're going to need water. We need a big pot. Okay, that another house gives them a pot to make the, the stone soup in. Another house gives them some beef. Another one gives carrots and potatoes. And when the stone soup's already and already made and everything else, the soldiers ate last, and they gave it to the villagers first, even though these are the ones that told them door to door they had nothing, until they brought everybody together. And it's funny because... Everybody had a good time. They enjoyed themselves. You must be that good Samaritan. You've got to be that person that thinks outside the box. Okay? It's not a matter of what you want. It's a matter of what you need. What you want means nothing. Okay? You know, everybody wants something. You know, everybody wants a million dollars. Everybody wants to take a vacation. Everybody wants, you know, to be financially free. Everybody wants, 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 wants. But what is it you need? And when people are like, oh, God didn't give me what I wanted or no one gave me what I wanted, or when I was in the Marine Corps, they didn't give me what I wanted. They didn't give me my bonuses and stuff. Yeah, that deals with me too, by the way. I didn't, they wouldn't give me a bonus for re-enlisting because it wasn't on the table yet. And, but I didn't need it, but I wanted it. And then you get mad because you're like, I did all this and I didn't get anything. And all of a sudden you're, you're entitled. Well, how are you entitled to something that was never yours in the first place? Sorry, I was wrapping up the hose, everybody. Okay, how do you... How, how, how do you tell people, you know, I'm entitled? What is entitlement? You're not entitled to anything ever. What you are is you have needs that need to be met. Um, and the Good Samaritan, they didn't have to give, all they needed to do was help a person up, reach down, pull them up off the ground. That gave that person good motivation and the, they were rewarded later on in life. Um, the other way the Good Samaritan works is at Christmas time, the uh, uh, person in the village was told, Hey, uh, God's going to become visiting you today. You know, you got to be ready. We don't know what time or anything else, but be ready. Made a huge feast, had a fire going in the fireplace, had a bed welcome and warming and everything else. All day he waited around and waited around. There was a knock at the door. A doc comes at the door. Doom, 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 doom. Sir, it was a man that was just starving and poor and couldn't do anything. And dreams and hopes were lost. And that's us a lot of the times. Our dreams and our hopes are lost on whatever it is, maybe gambling, maybe alcoholism, maybe drugs, uh, maybe we're going through court cases to where the other person's lying so much that we feel like we're between a rock and a hard place. And all of a sudden, you know, you come to this door and you're knocking and the guy answers and it's like, sir, can I please, you know, I, I, I don't have anything. I just, and he's like, well, what's wrong? He's like, well, I just lost everything. And well, I got a really important, get, well, he's like, all right, I tell you what, I, I got a few minutes and, and there's plenty for everybody. Just come in and you know, eat and warm yourself by the fire. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it so much. The the gentleman comes in and comes in and eats and everything else. And anyway, then he leaves and he's very grateful. 
but the but the guy the owner of the house is like where where's god at where's where's jesus at where whoever's coming to meet you where are they at right now where are they at all of a sudden there's another knock at the door it's getting late into the in the afternoon now and, and it's a it's a older woman who just just needs a rest for a minute say can i sit inside your house it's really cold out here can i can i sit in he's like looking at his time he's like i'm expecting somebody all right come in come in come in come in all right came in and the older lady sat down by the fire and they had a conversation and they laughed a little bit but then she had to go and you know gave him a little food off the table got them all warm you know the next one all of a sudden it's late in the evening now and no one showed up. No one showed up. And the guy's disappointed. He's just hurting, hurting really bad. He's like, I thought you, you were going to come and see me. I prepared everything for you. I had everything ready. All of a sudden, there's a knock at the door. A lady with her kids. Husband gone. No husband. Kids, clothes, ratty, torn. Needs a, just, it's cold outside. Needs a place to sleep. He's like, sir. And he's looking around. He's like, you know what? Come on in. I don't know where my guest is supposed to be at. But, you know, there's plenty of food on the table. Go ahead and eat. I tell you what, go ahead and stay here tonight. Just sleep. I'll help mend your kids' clothes. I'll get you some stuff from me. Anyway, the next morning when he woke up, the lady was so grateful. The kids were so... He even made him some toys. Now, granted, this is not the actual... This is just my version. You know, he gave them all hugs and said, Look, just whatever you do, just be important. Just matter. Even though I've got all the problems in the world, you need to matter. The guy goes back inside and sits down. And he basically looks up and goes, why have you forsaken me? Why, well, you, you said you were going to show up and you never showed up. You said you were come. I had a feast for you. You never showed up. I had a fire for you. You never showed up. I had a bed for you and you never showed up. And then a voice came to him and said, I did show up. I showed up when you need me the most. I showed up as a man who was hungry and down on his luck and you let me in and you fed me. I showed up, I was an old lady and I showed up just to see and you showed me kindness and you gave me warmth and you invited me into your home knowing there's a special event, knowing that all this stuff, you still knew me. I showed up as a lady whose kids had been homeless starving and you let me eat your food you put me in front of the fire you mended my clothes you gave me what you had on your back knowing that there was something that you wanted but you chose to give to those who needed I showed up and you provided just because you didn't know who I was, just because you did not know it was a test, doesn't mean it wasn't. And the whole time I showed up, and for that you'll be rewarded. For that is what makes us great. That's what makes us matter. Doing things out of need, not out of necessity. If you want that job, you learn about the companies you're gonna go give a job for. You want respect, you show respect. You want to grow up, you show up. You want people to take you seriously, then you need to be serious. You want love, you need to show love. It's not about money or possessions. It's about the needs. And if you help people with their needs, you'll get what you need in return. It doesn't matter how you get it, you get it. And it goes back to when I tell everybody else about the dream giver. Last, and I'll make it short, and then we're done. I told everybody, when Ordinary went into the desert, and this is by Bruce Wilkinson, the book that I read, he was following his dream. God gave him a dream. His, the dream giver gave him a dream. And he was in the desert for years. Some of us are years, months, some days. And no, some of them never get out of the desert. And then finally, hope arrives. Hope of all things is a person. Look at it as an angel. Look at it as something in your head. But hope arrives. And when you're sitting there beating up on God, beating up on yourself and everything else, and the words that come out of their mouth were, why are you so mad? What's, what, what happened? Well, I did everything I was supposed to, and now they're gone. I did everything I was supposed to, and now I have nothing. I, I'm 
hungry, I'm thirsty, I'm tired, I'm cold. Okay, but you're alive. Yes, but I was promised this dream and I was promised... Okay, hope's there just all like giddy and everything else like a smart aleck little boy. Or a smart aleck little girl, however you want to look at it. And they're there jumping up and down. I always think of an energized bunny or some sort. And Hope goes, oh, so... You wanted a feast. Yeah, I, I wanted a feast. I wanted to eat. He's like, oh, okay. But did you eat? What do you mean? Well, did you eat? Well, I found berries here and there. Great. Did you live another day when you ate? Well, yeah, but okay, so you ate. Okay, so you said you're thirsty. So have you drank in any water or had any? Well, yeah, I, I got water. So you actually drank. Well, yeah, so, but you're not, like, thirsty to where you're going to die. Well, no. Huh, okay. When you were cold, did you freeze to death? Well, well, no, it's the desert. It gets cold at night. Good, but did you freeze to death? No. When you were alone, did you feel alone? No. Huh. So, Hope goes and looks at him and goes, So, basically, when you were thirsty, you drank. When you were hungry, you ate. When you're cold, you got warmth. When you're alone, you were able to talk to yourself or somebody else. So, basically, your needs were all met, right? Well, yeah, but I was prom. Yeah, but your needs were met. And they're like, what do you mean? You got what you needed, not what you wanted. You wanted something. Look at Job in the Bible if you ever want to hear a good story about getting what you need, not what you want. The Prayer of Jabez is a great book to read also if you ever want to read a good story. But needless to say, we get what we need when we ask and for people and friends and everything else. We get it when we need it. If we ask for things that are overkill and we don't really need it all, but, you know, we want it and we ask and we don't get it. But anytime there's a need, we always get our needs filled for some reason. Seriously, think about that for a minute. We always get what we need when asked for. What we want is completely different. What we think we're entitled to is different. What we think that we should be able to have, okay, it doesn't matter a person's education or wealth or anything else. It's a matter of need. The Good Samaritan talks about kindness from somebody that didn't have to be kind. The Good Samaritan could be that person you're going to go in and see an interview with today or that drill instructor that freaking yelled at you so much and you hate him and you hate him, but now you're in the middle of battle. You're in the middle of combat. Maybe you're in Iraq, Afghanistan, Kosovo. Maybe you're in the middle of World War II and you, uh, you hated that drill instructor, but now all of a sudden with everything they did, now you're putting your head down when you're supposed to put your head down. You're firing your rifle when you're supposed to fire your rifle. Maybe you're getting that job when you need the job. All of a sudden, you got what you needed from those that were able to provide you with your needs. You're able to hear something that you needed to hear to provide you for those needs. That's why every day you got to go out there and be kind. Every day you got to go out there and ask yourself, do I need this or do I want this? You help enough people get to the top. I was telling one of my posts on there the other day, and my buddy Craig responded to it and a couple others. And I was like, the people with PTSD, depression, people that are having hardships and everything else, they're not going to reach up to you. Because they're afraid they're a burden. True people, good people feel like they're a burden for some reason. They don't want to burden anybody. People that take advantage, they'll reach up all the time because they're not actually down. But those that need us the most are the ones that are not telling it to us. When we're kind without knowing and reaching down, we don't know we're reaching down and pulling somebody up by telling them hi, by telling them thank you, by saying you matter. We're reaching down and basically we're offering who we are to give them a need that they need right now. We may not have money to help somebody, but that doesn't mean we can't be kind. Maybe that person was going to school today and they had all their books in their book bag and they went home and you met them on the way. Just say hi. Just, hey, you're awesome. You matter. Not realizing they didn't think they had a friend in the world and they were getting ready to go commit suicide because nobody noticed them. And on that very last minute of that very last day, you saved their life and you don't even know it. And all of a sudden they decided to go to school the next day. All of a sudden, you said, hey, I tell you what, let me go help you find a job. Don't give up. Let me help you. And you help them find a job. Maybe you give them a, a suit or a nice shirt or a tie. Maybe you pay for the person behind you in Hardee's or McDonald's, you know, things that we can do today. Not realizing that was going to be their last meal because that was their last dollar. Maybe you, somebody was so emotionally drained and they thought nobody loved them 
Nobody cared for him. But when you said, hey, you're awesome, you matter, you saved their life. It's not about what we want for ourselves. It's what we can do for other people. And when I do these, I want you to know I'm trying to save lives. I'm trying to save souls. I'm trying to basically let people know that no matter what goes on in life, we're all broken. We are all down and out. And we can make it through every day. It doesn't matter where you're at in the world. It doesn't matter if you're a Marine or Army or Navy or Coast Guard. Or It matters that if you're military and you're in the military and you hate your drill instructor so much. But now you find yourself in a combat situation or you find yourself in a humanitarian session. And everything that drill instructor said to you now makes sense. All of a sudden, they saved your life, but it was something they did years before. Muscle memory. Maybe it's somebody going for a job and you listened to, you know, in college, you listened to how to dress up and everything else. And if you wanted to dress up, you wouldn't have got that job. But because somebody saw a need with you, somebody helps you, somebody offered some advice and you took it, now your life is different. We can get mad at our parents for basically overprotecting us, whatever. But when we're out in that big bad world and that big bad wolf comes up to us, are we crying wolf? Are we slaying the dragon? People in the military have PTSD bad. I'm a Marine. I know my brothers have PTSD bad. I know depression's bad around the board. But I also know when people are locked in their homes from coronavirus and everything else, they need a friendly face. They need to let everybody know it's going to be okay. They got to get turn this damn politics off and these news off and all this fake crap off. Because what we need each other is our communities again. It takes a community to raise a child, and some of us have taken it upon ourselves to basically try to do it on our own, and we can't. We're not supposed to. That's not how we are created. That's not who we are, and it has nothing to do with religion. It has to do with you being important. It boils down to this. Be kind to the person in front of you. Be kind to the person behind you. Offer gratitude to the person to your right. Give love to the person on your left. That's how we're going to get through it. Don't ever mistake kindness, though, for weakness. People have done that with me and my other Marine Corps brothers and sisters. Never mistake somebody's pissy mood or being upset or anything as them being asked. Maybe they're going through something that you don't know about. So when you go out there and talk trash on them and you decided, oh, this person, maybe you don't know what they were going through. Maybe when you're making fun of somebody because they're wearing a face mask or not wearing a face mask, maybe you don't know that they have to go home to sick kids every single day. And if they get the corona, they can lose their kids. Or maybe you don't know if by not wearing that mask, it's, they're choking and they can't breathe and they, they, they feel suffocation. That's why they're not wearing a mask. Put things in reality for everyday life. And when you go in, respect what's going on. It's not yours. I used to tell people, I don't care what you do in life. As long as you don't do it around my family, you don't do it around my property, you don't do it around my home. I just asked that you respect my areas. If I go to yours, that's your area. You can do whatever you want. And I did that out of kindness. All right, everybody. Your matter. You're important. Have a motivational day. Have a great day and know that there's nothing you can't do or accomplish because you are important. I'm Jeffrey Jansen. Hope everybody has a blessed day and everything else. Oh, did you guys want to see the garden real quick? I'm sorry. I know a lot of people wanted to see my garden. All right, all right, all right. I'll show you everybody the garden real quick. And then I got to get going. So, so as you can see, I know a lot of people have these type of flowers. That's fine. Uh, my bulbs started blooming, but take a look at this guy. He finally came out today. He's so pretty. Look at the purple ones. So, this guy's going to be blooming next. He's going to be another very colorful one. So, and my reapers are doing good and everything. So, all right, everybody. I'll talk with everybody soon. Have a great day. Remember, you're awesome. You matter. You're important. Drop me a line down there and tell me what you're doing today just to say hi. Just even in this thing, just say hi on the comments. Love to hear from you. Bye, everybody.